It's easy for many anthropologists, geneticists, and outside observers to see the similarities between modern Europeans and East Asians, with both groups being among the palest races of human beings on the planet. Early anthropologists and ethnographers asserted such during a less knowledgeable age, pointing out the various outlier populations in each respective group that had uncanny similarities to each other. Many early linguists in the past pointed out the fact that certain groups in Europe, such as the Hungarians, Finnish, and the Sami, all speak languages belonging to the Uralic language family, a family that is largely believed to have originated from outside the borders of Europe. So what does this mean for their people? Pretty much every Uralic speaking group, other than those in Europe, live in northern Russia in and around the Ural Mountains. Now, it's been proven through haplogroup identification that most Uralic peoples are also connected genetically to other native Siberian ethnic groups like the Turkic speaking Yakuts of the Saka Republic, Chukchi people, the Yukagir peoples, and possibly even the Tungusic peoples of far eastern Siberia and northeast China. The haplogroup that the majority of Siberian Uralic peoples carry is actually believed to have originated in southern China, moving north and then west once the people reached the plains of Siberia. So does this mean that Hungarians, Finns, and other Uralic peoples are actually related to the Chinese? Well, race, ethnicity, and genetics are much more complicated than that. Does language perfectly correlate with race and ethnicity? Well, not necessarily in the case of the Turkish people who speak a Turkic language but are genetically more similar to other Middle Eastern people than the Central Asian Turkic groups. However, language is almost always a pretty good indicator of certain groups having a common lineage or genetic origin. What does this mean for the Hungarians, Finnish people, Estonians, and the Sami, the four ethnic groups native to Europe that predominantly speak a Uralic language? The majority of the time that a group passes through a region populated by a different race, they'll gradually mix in and assimilate with that host group, steadily losing some of their own traits while picking up characteristics of the latter. This is the case in such group as the Ashkenazi Jews, who originated in the Levant, yet are mostly now European in appearance, and the Romani people of Eastern Europe, who can also mostly blend in with the native whites. In the case of Hungarians, Finns, and Estonians, they are effectively no longer a part of the Uralic gene pool, seeing how their original Uralic forefathers migrated to Europe over a thousand years ago, and their original North Asian genes have been so effectively diluted through intermarriage with Europeans that the average Finn or Hungarian has no more Asian DNA than your average Pole or Russian. The Hungarian population today has much more in common with other Central Europeans, especially Slavs, and the Finnish population is very Norse in many ways, with one of the only remnants of their original Uralic foundation being their language and some aspects of their culture. The rest of the Uralic peoples of Siberia have a much larger proportion of the original North Asian gene pool, with many of the groups such as the Nenets, Mansi and Mari having a very interesting look being a combination of Northeast Asian and Proto-East European peoples. In this way, they are quite similar to the various Turkic groups of Central Asia, them being a mix of Middle Eastern, European, and East Asian genes, forming a transitional population between the many diverse regions that surround them. The Sami are very unique in Europe since they are a Samoyedic people located in Scandinavia just north of the Finns and are scattered throughout the various countries in the region, that being Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. They clearly look distinct from the Finnish people, having most of the typical physical traits of Northern Europeans, except a very large proportion of Sami have the epicanthic fold of East Asians that led many early anthropologists to place Sami and Finns with East Asians rather than Europeans. However, through modern DNA testing and historical research, it's been determined that the Sami are no more genetically disparate from that of modern Europeans than the Finns, with the epicanthic fold being reminiscent of an earlier native European population that lived in the region before the Uralic-speaking peoples arrived. The native people of Siberia come from many different language families and religions, however, most native Siberians have a common origin from East Asia. There are various definitions for the region that most Westerners know as Siberia, with the official description of Siberia in the strictest sense being the Siberian Federal District of Russia being located in the middle of the largest country on Earth. However, many times Siberia is considered to be contiguous with the term North Asia and is simply used to describe all of the modern state of Russia, 
east of the Euro mountain range, making it one of the most vast and devoid places on the planet, having the lowest population density of any region outside of Antarctica. Many people are aware that the overwhelming majority of people living in Siberia today are not native to the region, and in many ways, Siberia is similar to the continents of the Americas. The Russian conquest of Siberia was just that, a conquest, a subjugation of the land and people, a 300 year march to the east that asserted their dominance in the region and set them up for the path to superpower status. Their admittedly very ruthless and bloody route through the tundras of Siberia started in the early 1500s with the Cossacks, a class of Eastern European Slavic elite from Russia and Ukraine, in a rather stark reversal of the hundreds of years of supremacy of the East Asian Mongol groups. Today, the handful of native Siberians that are still around live in small to mid-sized pockets in the tundra, largely speaking their own languages and following shamanistic traditional religions, while most rural areas and virtually all urban areas in Siberia are inhabited by ethnic Russians, Ukrainians, and other Eastern European groups. Native Siberians can range in appearance from East Asians to somewhat European to maybe somewhere in between, with many actually having blonde hair and blue eyes. Even though the various East Asian powers, that being the Mongol, Chinese, and Japanese Empire, have had a strong grasp on various parts of North Asia, today East Asians make up only a tiny minority of the population there, with the largest being the various Mongol tribes near the Republic of Mongolia, known as Buryats. Koreans also make up a small minority in the region of Primorsky Krai, especially the city of Vladivostok, seeing how the area used to belong to the Qing Dynasty and the Chinese would use Koreans for hard labor in the biting cold, and the island of Sakhalin where the Japanese used them for much of the same purpose. Because of various policies of forced migration by Joseph Stalin and other Soviet leaders, there's a myriad of different ethnic minorities in the region, such as Belarusians and Tartars. And Siberia used to actually have one of the largest proportions of Ukrainians in the Russian Empire in the early 20th century because all of the state's political enemies were forced to settle in the region, much in the same way that Australia was once used as a penal colony by the British Empire. Bizarrely, there's even a region in Russian Siberia known as the Jewish Autonomous Oblast, where Jews only make up around 1% of the population, but originally it was intended that all of Russia's Jews would settle into the territory on the border with China. However, this didn't exactly pan out, with most of Russia's Jews heading to Israel instead. Interestingly enough, there's a strong connection between the people of Siberia and the indigenous inhabitants of the continents of the Americas, as we discussed last video, and a couple groups, such as the Aleuts, are actually native to both continents, that being the northeast corner of Asia and the northwest corner of North America. One of the most interesting North Asian groups are the Ainu people of the region around the Sea of Okhotsk on the Russian island of Sakhalin, the Kuril Islands, and the northernmost Japanese island of Hokkaido. The Ainu today are merely a small minority of the population of Japan, at maybe 0.2% of the population at most, or about 4% of their native Hokkaido, being an even smaller percentage in Russia. However, they've garnered an immense amount of interest from anthropologists for quite some time now. The main reason for the spotlight on the group was over their apparent slight physical resemblance to Europeans, seen in their eye shape, hair texture, and facial and body hair, which is very, very prominent in contrast to most Northeast Asians, who for the most part are not very hairy. Early anthropologists speculated that perhaps the Ainu were descended from an early European expedition to the Far East. However, upon modern day genetic testing, we've discovered that the Ainu are in fact most closely related to other native Siberian peoples. Many linguists, on the other hand, have suggested a link between Ainu, Japanese, Korean, and the many Austric languages of Southeast Asia that originated from Taiwan, which could be possible, but almost certainly the genes of the modern Ainu originated from Siberian groups. The Ainu and Sami people groups actually have a lot in common that you might not have thought about before. Both groups are a small minority in the traditional homelands, being in the far north of their respective regions of East Asia and Northern Europe. They each have physical traits and characteristics unique for their position in the region, and are both genetic anomalies in their own right. Are they, however, the missing link between modern Asians and whites? Well, not exactly as early scientists believed. 
Let me know your thoughts on the various North Asian Siberian peoples, the Ainu and Sami, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone, this has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.